Give us 60 minutes and we'll give you Nelson Radio every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. on KTLK AM 1150. With 29 years in the mortgage business and an array of top-level guests visiting the show, Nelson is in a unique position to bring you cutting-edge information on real estate, business, finance, and law. If you have any questions for Nelson or any of his guests, give him a call at 888-888-2136. That's 888-888-2136. Or check him out online at nelsonradio.com. Nelson Radio. Welcome back to Nelson Radio, heard right here on KTLK AM 1150, Saturdays from 2 to 3 o'clock. I'm with my special guest host, Marco Rufo from Prudential California Realty in Pacific Palisades, and also Rick Kurtz, the CEO and founder of Resource Dynamics. And for the two of you, I've teased you with what our next guest was going to be in Coach, Coach's Corner, and this is a phenomenal story. And I want to introduce you to Pete Nelson. Pete, are you with us? I sure am. Thank you. So, so, so let me just tee this up a little bit because I think it's so dynamic. Pete, you started your career in the traditional home building business, correct? That is correct. In 1987. So, f- from the the grassroots, I, I remember uh, off air you shared with me a mentor that you had, a fellow by the name of Ed, who was a home builder, and and uh, it seemed to be a, an attraction for you through your early career to. to be hands-on, developing things, exercising that creative authority. Take it from there and tell us what's led to your current development practice. Well, I've, I've always been a builder. I mean, I, I knew as a boy, probably seven years old, sort of in your blood. I mean, you, you got to build things. And I just, I love the process, all of it, you know, the design, the execution. I'm not a big, uh, you know, I'm not a patient person, which is maybe my biggest downfall and that uh, I don't like to wait a year for a permit like we often have to in some of the leftover lots here in Seattle. But that's that's basically what I did. I went, I, I moved from uh, Colorado Springs. Uh, Ed Biggs was my mentor there who uh, taught me how to build houses really from, from scratch and uh, how to manage a, a project like that where you design it and shepherd it through the building permit process and then and then the building process itself and finally sell it to a ideally uh, a very excited new homeowner. Anyway, I, I hooked up with him and, and uh, you know, I was siding some of his houses as a college student and then he taught me the ropes and uh, and then when I went on to Seattle, my wife is from Oregon and in fact, she she lived in Pacific Palisades as a very young woman. Ah. I mean, this is a long time ago. How about uh, that? Sixties, gorgeous place. And um, anyway, she she dragged me, uh, kicking and screaming, to Seattle, the the rainy Northwest. And so we ended up in Seattle. I got a, a business plan together, Washington Federal, a great uh, savings and loan. Now I think they're called a savings bank, but they uh, they financed these early deals. And um, I did... I built houses, you know, one at one at a time, leftover lots, steep problem lots that were either, you know, very steep or had water or issues. They were in older neighborhoods, and I just learned a lot about structure, um, engineering, and how you know, uh, you know, an engineer will will crush your dreams in terms of like the reality of what it takes to hold a building up in a nice seismic four uh, earthquake zone and all of that. So, Pete, you know, you've, was, you've, you've stretched the boundaries of steep and speculative with your uh, <laughs> development business. So share with our listeners what you're actually building up in the Northwest and across the world for that matter now. So I always had a dream, you know, in this sort of um, ADD way of, of building smaller structures that, that maybe didn't involve spending a year at the building department trying to get a permit for something. And, and they, in fact, are tree houses. And, and my little... I've had this crazy idea for many, many years, and um, I just imagined that I could be maybe a treehouse builder. And, and the market, of course, it was, I guess you'd say, underdeveloped in that most treehouses were being built by, by 12, 14-year-olds, and, and uh, there was no budget to be to, at all. Or, or, you so know, he excelled. Here. He was competing against yeah, 12, well, 14 <laughs> And here's what I want you to do. If you're in front of your computer and listening to this, you got to Google or Bing Treehouse Masters with Pete Nelson because he's talking – these aren't treehouses with – little platforms and rope swings. There's certainly that as a component. But some of these treehouses, give us some of the examples of some of your projects where uh, they are anything but just that kid's little treehouse. 
Well, the the, uh, the neat thing is with the background of building houses and understanding the real weight of, of some of these structures is, you know, the treehouse that we built as kids was often just a little tiny light lightweight, you know, two by fours and plywood or leftover signs. But it was, uh, you know, the the vision I had as a more as an adult was something, you know, even even a two hundred square foot fully appointed room will weigh twelve. 16,000 pounds before you know it. And, uh, and so how you accommodate that is, um, is a bit of a, a, a challenge, you know, I mean, we're going to put that up into a tree. And, and so with the background of, of uh, understanding that, that there's some, some serious forces involved, I, I hooked up with an engineer by the name of Charlie Greenwood, who's in based in Oregon. And he's, uh, He's really a remarkable, remarkable genius, I think, and he has done all the homework to figure out what a tree can handle in terms of, you know, sheer strength, you know, like literally the sheer strength of the bolt that you put to the side of the tree and then hang a beam off of it or perch a beam on top of it. And and uh, we're finding that with a certain type of hardware, and this is something that's been going on for now, uh, it's, this was mid-'90s when we were making these, these um discoveries i guess is that you put a you put a bolt into a, the side of a good hardwood tree or a, a douglas fir tree and uh it might be three well the bolts we use are three inches in diameter and it goes in about nine inches into the tree and if you put a weight on that that connection you can support anywhere from six to fifteen thousand pounds but let me so, ask some pete you know you, yeah. you talked about you putting a nail in our or screw you said screw i believe into a yeah. douglas fir some what about the tree what are you doing to the tree itself this, this is the greatest news and it was worrisome at the beginning when we were you know invading a tree like this but in fact the tree is responding so remarkably well i mean it's it makes sense when you think about it a three inch steel bolt is um not unlike a branch that sticks out of the side of any tree. And the trees are, of course, used to having branches, and they just simply grow wood, and they do every year they put another ring on, and, and it absorbs these bolts. And, in fact, these bolts get stronger over time as they're absorbed by the tree. So, yeah, I mean, the tree physiologically is responding in a, in a, a really a positive way. way. Yeah. Uh, let yeah. me ask you, do yeah. you have, do you, have uh, you know, harborists all the time, uh, you know, yelling at you, writing you letters about what you're doing, or are uh, they behind you now? More good news here. It's amazing. I was so worried. My, my first book I, I did on the subject came out in 1994, and I was so worried that I was going to get a lot of hate mail from arborists and people that were just concerned I was killing the trees. And, Share and with us fact, the title of that first book. That was called Tree Houses, The Art and Craft of Living Out on a Limb, uh, <laughs> published by Houghton Mifflin, 1994. did really, really well, but it was really the first treehouse book. There are many, many now, but in fact, I've written five, and a, a sixth is coming out uh, next spring. But Marco, Rick Kurtz, you know, it's interesting. I just wanted to uh, point out that uh, Pete is now developing these uh, tree houses across the world. It's an international wow. campaign. And, and uh, I, I wanted, uh, before we let you go, Pete, have you share just the, the uh, one project that you said was one of your most exciting in West Thalmas, uh, Snug Harbor. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, you know, it was just one of the greatest places. I'm, a, I'm an architecture buff. I love design and, and uh, residential design. And at the birthplace of, uh, of, of the shingle style, you know, this is on Cape Cod, Anyway, I was asked to come back to that area in, uh, it was the year 2000, and so it was quite a while ago, but the memory stands out because I really worked hard to try to uh, make something classic and lasting in, in that shingle style, and I was in, I was right up at the end of Snug Harbor, which is an idyllic New England boating community, and, and the family was so gracious and sweet and kind and just it invited me into their home for about a month of, of building this thing, and it was it was September, so the water was perfect, and the, there was a. You know, it's just one of those great memories, and I'm so so grateful for a lot of those kind of memories where I get to go with my merry group of of carpenter guys that that uh, work with me, and we and we do these things. We put yeah. a lot of. A lot of smiles on faces, and it's yeah. just a, a real joy. Fantastic. You know, we have to uh, encourage everyone to, to uh, check out your show on Animal Planet, and it's called Treehouse Masters. Pete Nelson, thanks for being with us. You you brought together the bookends of Steep and Speculative, and some of these homes <laughs> you'll see online are just fantastic examples yeah. of development in, in architecture and art. 
in, I, in many cases. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, thank you. I appreciate all of your time and, and for sharing this with everybody. Thank you. It's Tree Masters on Animal Planet. That was Pete Nelson. I'm with Marco Rufo from Prudential California Realty. You can reach us direct. 888-888-2136. That's 888-888-2136. This segment brought to you by none other than Marco Rufo from Pacific Palisades, Prudential California Realty. We'll be right back. Nelson is a licensed lender under the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 331060. This is Nelson from Nelson Radio, and it's important that we talk about a very serious issue. We had bad lending practices that led to the mortgage meltdown, but now we've got the challenge of deplorable customer service coming out of the meltdown. Bottom line, getting a new loan can be like pulling teeth without Novocaine. I've got the solution. Academy Mortgage and my team are injecting into the industry real performance and real accountability. Here are the facts. Appraisals in less than a week. Rate guarantees that can improve if the market goes down. Purchase transactions with our market-exclusive close-on-time guarantees and refinance transactions in as little as 30 days. Who would have thunk? Guaranteed rates and guaranteed performance from your mortgage lender. Call me, Nelson, an accountable loan expert for nearly three decades, direct at 888-888-2136. That's Nelson at 888-888-2136, 888-888-2136, or at strongcreditrewards.com.